Finally, the mechanism we were waiting for to place a subject into another image without changing its elements has arrived. In this video, I'll quickly show you how to do it. For example, giving your product, which is this bag, to a subject in another image without altering it. Hey guys, this is the workflow I was talking about and we will take a look at it and learn how to use it. Here we have two load image nodes, one for model or a place that can be a room or a location and whatever you want. And second one, a subject that can be everything, a bag, a hat, a necklace, and any product you want to place into your first image. Simply drag and drop your images into proper node. This is first node and the bag in the second node. Here we have flux one field dev for our main model. We have dual clips and a new LoRa model called ACE++ Confi UI subject which you must download to be able to use this workflow. I put all the links you need in the description. For this model you need to go here in this link and in files and versions tab select subject and download this model. Then copy it and paste it into your LoRa's folder. Confi UI main folder models folder and LoRa's. I've made a folder in order I can find it easier just like that. Here we have prompt section which is very important in this workflow. At the beginning of our prompt we say maintain the handbag features. This is a subject a handbag and here we say maintain the handbag features. So the AI will focus on maintaining the handbag features, just like that. And afterward, you type your prompt, which should describe your final image. Simply in my final image, I have a photorealistic portrait of a stylish woman from the waist up, holding a futuristic ceramic handbag, etc. Oh, I forgot to tell you about the masking section. When you load your first image, you need to right click on it and click Open in mask editor. I cleared the previous mask and brush over the areas you want to remove and replace your second image in it. Just like that. I also brush the shadow of the back. We can make it white to see the mask holes. Okay, then you click save. In this node, if you want higher quality for your final image, you can increase the height and width and give more space to AI to work on your image. I put 1200 for both of them. And the AI will crop this part of my image and upscale it or downscale it to reach this size. Okay? In case sampler node, you can choose your steps and other settings. And since we have activated the Flux Turbo 8 step, we can use 8 to 12 steps for our work. And you don't need to increase it to 20 steps. And you're done. You can run the workflow and see your result. I don't run the workflow because I've already done it and I want to show you the before and after. Look at the precision of putting the subject in our image. The lighting, the colors, the patterns of the bag are very precise and haven't changed. If I show you the image of the bag, you can see the pattern of the bag haven't changed at all. The flowers here and the, the other flowers on the bag are exactly the same. This is fantastic, just fantastic guys. In some cases, you need to generate multiple images to get a good result. We have another example here. We have a room. We want to place this heater at the corner of our room. And you can see the object is placed very naturally and without any alteration of its features. It's fantastic, guys. Now I want to show you a few more examples. Here we have two images. One is our subject image, which is a pink pair of headphones. And the other is the background image which is a gaming setup desk. Okay, for prompt section, make sure you've written your final prompt before generating. If you don't write it, there's a chance your subject won't be generated properly. 
Here, if you can see, I write a pair of pink wireless headphones with glowing blue accents on gaming setup desk. And also, it's really important that you definitely write this part at the beginning, maintain subject features. Then describe your final image here. And then you're good to go. And hit the Q prompt. I've already done that and you can see how well the subject is placed in the image and how features of the headphones are preserved. And this is the power of this workflow. The next one is a sneaker with a grass background. You can see in the final image how well it's placed into the scene while keeping its details and also its pattern. If you look closely, you'll notice I wrote a complete prompt that described all the details of my subject. I fully described it and look at the final result, how appealing it is and how well it matches the scene. Our next subject is a teapot with floral patterns on it. I want to place it on this kitchen table. You can see how well it has reconstructed the details of the teapot and even created its shadow here on the table. Also, the flowers on the teapot are placed almost 99% accurately. Again, I'm emphasizing that the prompt part is very important in this workflow and must be complete. For the next one, here is a toy that I wanted to place on this chair. A photo of a dinosaur toy and a kid's table and chair. You can see how well it positions the dinosaur on the chair and preserved its elements. About 99% of the dinosaur's features are maintained. And you can see how well it has placed. After this, let me mention a general point. If you have a product with a lot of fine and important small details, this workflow might not work very well for you. Subjects like necklaces, bracelets, and even bags that have tiny details that matter to you, it's likely this workflow can't capture them accurately. The reason is that this workflow starts by sticking two images next to each other and starts by copying from one side and paste it to another side. If your subject has very tiny details, it most likely won't be able to clearly recognize and copy those into the final image. I'm not saying it can't copy details at all, but very small ones are difficult for this workflow. But for subjects like the dinosaur you saw here, even its fine details were preserved, like the red color on its nose, you can see here parts of its feet and the red areas on its shoulders are preserved. It even rendered the green parts well here. You can see it has very strong capabilities for copying elements. But in some cases it might bother you because those really tiny details, especially on jewelry, bracelets and decorative accessories, can't be captured properly. So I suggest that if you want to light your product properly and change its background, for those cases, use the background replacement workflow from the post I mentioned earlier. And you see the link above and you can click on it and see that video. In that video, I've taught a complete different method that allows you to change the background of even the most complex subjects and it can even preserve the tiniest text on your subject and also the details of accessories like necklaces and bracelets. With that workflow, you will be able to maintain very fine and tiny details. The difference from this workflow is that in other one, you can manually provide a background image. You're free to download any background you want from the internet or generate it first with AI and then bring it in. In that method, you can choose both images yourself as inputs. But in that workflow I taught in the previous video, the background is generated using a prompt and you can't give it a background image that you've already created or downloaded. It only takes one input, which is your subject. The background must be created through a prompt. However, that workflow is much more powerful than this one when it comes to lighting and preserving the details of the subject. But the downside is 
It uses SML Diffusion 1.5 models, but the workflow that you have two input images uses Flux. Each workflow has its own advantages. This one has some strength and that one has others. In my opinion, you should be familiar with both so that depending on your project, you can use one or the other. That way, no matter what subject you're working with, you can confidently change the background and lighting. Another difference between the two is that in this workflow, your subject might change slightly. For example, the angle or pose might be altered. But in that workflow, it gives you exactly what you input. Nothing changes except the lighting and the background. So both workflows are useful and you'll need to choose the one that fits your needs best for the changing background and lighting in different situations. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next videos.